Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and welcome to my Storyteller Horoscope for you for March 2019. Go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, if you'd like to book a live reading. Also, if you love the way I teach astrology and want to learn, there may be some slots in my astrology apprenticeship program. You can see more about and order my book, Radical Prayer, Transform Your Life and the World in 28 Days, which has now become an Amazon bestseller. So you can see more about that at AnnieHelpsYou.com or at RadicalPrayerBook.com. So we've got lots going on for Sagittarius for March 2019. We've got a lot of internal energy, a time to rest and adjust your ambitions. Jupiter has been blazing through our sign. I'm a Sag also, and it's bringing a lot of maybe overwhelm, activity, accomplishment. It could be that you're so amped up that you can't even do anything because it's overwhelming. So this is an amazing time to rest and to evaluate what you've done over the last months or the opportunities that have come to you and just reset your course that's more in tune with how you're feeling right now. So this is an amazing time for reflection. It's super creative and it has lots of potential for you to get hyper-focused and super productive by taking the time to just stop and evaluate what has gone on so far. I want to use the charts, the visuals, to go into way more detail. I have lots of detail for you this month about things that you can expect and how you can best use the energies, but I'd like to use the charts as a visual in order to do that in the most effective way. So let's look at those charts now. Hello, Sagittarius friends. Okay, if you're still with me, that means you're interested in seeing the visuals for the highlights that I just gave you. Um, So those of you who would like to learn, this is your special segment. If you're not interested in this learning part, which will also give more information about what's going on this month for you, so I do recommend you listen to it, but you can always fast forward to the general transit report, um, which will take the visuals out and just give you some other need to knows for the general energy this month. But for those of you who want to learn, here we go. So the first thing we need to know is where in the 30 degrees of Sag you fall. Okay, so our Sagis, we've got early, middle, and late. November born or 0 to 9 degrees is early. Middle, December 1st through 10th around, 10 through 19 degrees. Late is around December 11th through the rest of the sign or 20 to 29 degrees. These work if you are watching for your rising moon or sun sign. And sometimes I'll get a question if you're on the edge there between an early and a middle or a middle and a late, which one are you? You know, this um, is not an exact science because the sun moves into Sagittarius on a different day each year. It's not the same. It's staggered. So this will shift by a degree or a day. I mean, that you know, where you are can shift. But it's close enough. So the closer you are, whatever one you're closer to, like if you're right here at the edge of, of early, you know, maybe the middle report will look closer to you. So whatever you are closest to will be most relevant for you. All right. So if you missed that, then just go rewind and get that sorted out. And now we can talk about the visuals for the things that I listed. So the first thing, now I'm using this late degree chart, but it doesn't matter because we're not talking about houses right now. So what I'm talking about is relevant for all Sag placements, even though what you see is this late degree. Okay. The first thing to know about this time of year, every year, this isn't just this year, you may notice that around this time of year, you feel certain ways, certain things sort of happen. You get in this certain mode. And... That's because the personal planets are moving through Pisces. And Pisces energy affects Sag energies in certain ways. This is a 90 degree angle. It's actually a challenging angle. So the energy of water, of this, of this water, moves in many ways against the natural way Sag moves. You know, just imagine a wildfire and then imagine water on it and it's putting it out. Or imagine just a fireplace and water's on it and putting it out. So these are like the positive and negative manifestations of the combination because if you have a wildfire, you really need some water. (laughs) So when you're getting out of control, which I bet a lot of you are, I know I have been, because this is our time. Jupiter is in our sign. Everything is really exciting. We've had an open window to get stuff done. We've been frantic, doing everything, scattered, whacked out. So... This March time is a relief where it's like this permission to relax. And if we don't 
purposely do it, we have to do it anyway. <laughs> so we're more likely to get sick or have something occur that makes us take some downtime. The negative manifestation of how it doesn't flow nicely is when you're just trying to get something started, then water comes and it's like, boop, it's dousing it. So that's why in general, you may notice that water can be irritating to you. Even like people who have prominent water, they can serve as like an annoyance factor sometimes where you're like, I'm trying to do all this stuff. Let me be right. You can see the nature of the dynamics there, but you might also notice if you have a ton of Sag, like I do, I have nine placements in Sagittarius. God help me. So I tend to attract water and people close to me because I am a wildfire burning out of control all the time. So these water people are like, Hey, Annie, Settle down a little bit, settle down a little bit, right? And you may notice the same thing. So this time of year, if you know that this is going on, which now you do because I'm telling you, then you just purposely relax. I always plan my rest, retreat, just kind of introspective things at this time. So it's very emotional and it's internal. That's something that doesn't naturally match with Sag energy. Sag people are among the most... Um, friendly and helpful, caring people that I know, they always want to help people. Very altruistic. But in general, talking about feelings is easier for Sages than actually sitting down and feeling them because we want to be in motion. We're in an upward spiral. That's the energy of Sag. It's just this whoop, it's just going up. But while it's going up, it's over here, it's over here, it's over here, it's over here. You know, it's, it's all over the place. So when this time comes, either purposely because we feel the energy intuitively and we do it or from situations outside of our control, it's time to relax, get internal. I love this time for inner work, for resting, for sleeping more, for planning your next big projects or planning your next big trips. Not to say you can't travel during this time because even with Mercury retrograde, it can be quite fine for travel. Just better for flexible travel if you can help it and just have to be more aware and check for, you know, lost luggage, gate changes, plans are more likely to shift at this time, but it can be excellent for travel. But in any case, you know, it's emotional. So like adjusting your ambitions, assessing what you've done since Jupiter has been in Sag, assessing, you know, where you want to go, where you want to be. It's dreamy and it can be super creative. So I love this time for like painting you know, drawing, any, whatever your art venue is, whatever is like relaxing, fun, artistic for you, this is super perfect for that. This is also great for bringing your publishing projects that are from the past back into focus. Many Sages tend to be prolific with words through writing or speaking. So going back over old material, condensing it, shifting it, adjusting it, getting it prepared to bring out. Okay, so this is the mood for most of the month, but once the sun moves into Aries, like around the 20th, that's going to change and you guys are going to get crazy again because once the planets start moving into Aries, holy hat, that makes trines, beautiful angles to Sag placements. So that mood is definitely going to change and then we'll move into this like, okay, we're ready, let's do everything, let's active, we're antsy, we gotta go places, we got to do things. And so launches, things that you've been working on in March are better into April. The Mercury retrograde shadow lasts through around April 17th, but there still could be some okay dates um, before then, which you'll see in the April report. But um, in general, try to plan your launches and big things being pushed out, you know, a little bit more into April and May. Uh, but definitely plan to get restless and busy and be whacked out and scattered and overdoing everything again. So take advantage of this internal quiet time. <laughs> also in general, Sages, this is something important that's going on because of Saturn and Capricorn and the combination of Jupiter and Sag. And this is true for all, all of y'all. So Saturn, when it moved through Sagittarius, thank God that's over, right? It was telling us to get more streamlined with our efforts. And to some degree, we did. But now that Saturn is kind of reiterating this as it moves through Capricorn, we've got these big ideas, right? All this stuff we want to do. And then Saturn at the same time is saying, streamline it, condense it. So you may have multiple projects or things out there that you're feeding energetically that are not serving your, your most efficient manifestations. So the more you can look to condense, organize, um, you know, rethink your efforts to make each 
move that you make more powerful and have more energy behind it and not be spread too thin, the more productive you can be when Jupiter's in Sag because we've got this beautiful year, one year every 12 years, which is now when Jupiter's in our sign. And the best way we can use that is to be grounded because one end of Jupiter being in this placement can have us have big ideas, have lots of things happen for us, things open up in a major way, major amounts of expansion, but sometimes it's so much that we get overwhelmed and we don't do anything or we get lazy and self-indulgent because we can't do anything because we're overwhelmed with the ideas. So if you can just pick a couple of ideas, you know, just pick one, two, maybe three things or, you know, whatever is going to be good for you. But if you have 50 ideas, as I know most Sages, <laughs> my Saggy friends are always have like at least 50 ideas in any given day, right? So if you can take your top ideas, the ones that seem to have worked in the past, the ones you're most excited about and make your plan to bring those out. March is amazing for doing this kind of restructuring work and then, you know, into April kind of implementing um, the, the condensed ideas that you have. And while you're listening to this now, you know, it might be sooner than March because I put these up a month early. You might be feeling this energy already, this, this urge to condense. I know in January, I was really feeling it. The, the lunar eclipse really um, made that come into presence for me. And now this is just kind of continuing it on. So just be aware of that. Those of you who have your Sag planets that are between 21 and 24 degrees, I do. Mine is at 24 degrees. This is exciting. Um, and this is like, you know, birthdays around 13th through 16th. Okay, so December 13th through 16th birthdays or so close to the days close to there. Or like, what do we say? 21 through 24 degrees. Jupiter is going to cross over your, your, our placements this month. And that's really exciting. Woo! Wait a long time for that. We are going to get one more pass at this because it's going to go forward, go into retrograde and then pass back over this point. So this isn't the only time it's going to happen this year, which is exciting, but just notice what's happening. There is a revolution. It's, um, you know, it, it's just a really, really big time for all Sages, but especially this month for those designations, you've got a lot of extra energy. So it's kind of interesting that here at a time where it's not the best to launch things, you've got some of your best Jupiter aspects. So just kind of feel into it because for many of us, there are going to be things that we did in the past that we want to relaunch and that would be fine to do at this time. Um, there's like something that we did before with a slight tweak and we're just kind of like offering it again, something that's been going on, but we're shifting it a little bit. Those kind of things are fine to bring out now. It's just the projects that no one's ever seen, super new. We want to kind of hold off till April for those. Also note that all of these planets are already in Aries. The sun's going to join soon and eventually Mercury will be there. When planets are in Aries, we'll be talking about this more over the upcoming months, they make... 120 degree angle to our Sag planets. So there's a lot of planets. So anyone, you know, no matter what designation you're in in Sag, you've got something over there. <laughs> Any of these things coming and making 120 degree angles to your Sag placements are going to light them up. So that's super sweet. And more of that energy is going to come as these other placements get into Aries. Very prolific time. Very awesome time for Sages. I'm super excited for us. Okay, so let's see. Those are the things that are most on my mind for Sag this month. Now I want to talk about my top favorite transits and notable things of the month in the general transits. So I'm just going to do a quick overview of the general transits that will be affecting you now. So the general transits of March 2019 carry the energy of sudden changes amidst a quiet rest. March continues the trend that started in February of 2019 with more sweet aspects than challenging ones, which is very exciting. So this dreamy and creative Pisces energy is going to dominate the month of March. Then around the 20th, as the sun moves into Aries, the climate will change, the energy will change, but most of the month is covered in this quiet creativity after this uh, push of the window that we had that opened at the end of December and went into the end of February, beginning of March. 
So it's a great time to experiment and work in the backdrop. Things from the past are very likely to come back. Um, blessings from the past, things you've done from the past, uh, projects from the past, people from the past. There's a strong tilt with the retrograde energies. So Mercury will officially be in retrograde from March 5th through the 28th, depending on your time zone, those dates could toggle a little bit. But the whole month and even starting February 19th and going to April 17th, there's the retrograde transit because there's a pre-transit shadow period and a post-transit shadow period when the energies are starting to shift. Uh, so it's a long transit. Making commitments to short-term arrangements could be perfectly fine, but just know that in general, the energy shows a shorter term agreement or a shorter term energy. So things that you do in this time, if you're intending them to be long term, they often wind up being shorter term than expected, or if they do make it into the long term, they get seriously called into question or have to change dramatically in order to be able to persevere. But for short term things, interim plans, things like that, it can be perfectly fine. It's great for trying on things, continuing with things you've already been doing, editing, um, anything like that. Also watch paperwork and other agreement details carefully because Mercury ruling communication can interfere with the clarity of information that you get at this time and things agreed to will likely be shifted or you might not know all the information. Also things involving transportation are more likely to come up. So problems with your car, um, trips, changes to plans, those are all common. But in general, the month has definitely more sweet aspects than challenging ones, and it's a very nice rest in between these um, push points. Okay, so once we start to get into April, it's gonna be time to push again, and you'll start to feel that energy starting at the end of March, but it's going to brew and get stronger and more clear as we get into April. One of the twists, or the big twist this month, is amidst this uh, smooth and introspective flow, Uranus is moving back into Taurus to stay until, you know, years from now. So um, generally the transit is around seven years. It popped in last year to Taurus and then it went out. And as you may recall, the energy as it popped in is or was um, instigating earthquakes and volcanic eruptions and wild weather that has still continued. Also, there have been a lot of things going on in the news that relate to the breakup of old systems and the solidity of intact systems that are getting disrupted. And Uranus moving through Taurus, this is very typical of that energy. So these kind of changes and disruptions and volatility probably will shift. So our relationship to the changes is what we get to have control over. So these changes to old systems can be a very welcome thing if things are stodgy and not working. Um, but in the places where there's some security, sometimes that can be upset in, in these times. And this goes all the way down, you know, starting at the global level, all the way down to the individual experience. So Uranus bringing changes there amidst this quiet time and beyond. In general, the commitment for, or the recommendation for this time is to keep your commitments um, as light as possible and as flexible as possible. You can certainly do things, but just know that things that are planned could get called into question. There could be shifts. Um, they could still work out, but there's definitely a lot more of a kind of a last minute flowing, flexible energy that works well with this time. So I'm going to give you the days that there are sweet aspects. Do know that even if I give you a date that's supposed to have a sweet aspect, you can feel that aspect days before or days after. And some days have more than one aspect with one of them being sweet and one of them being challenging. So you really just need to tune into your intuition with this awareness. Um, the dates I'm going to give you, you can also find written as well as explanations of all the aspects and what you can expect with them when you go to anniehelpsyou.com and sign up for my free email newsletter. Then I send out a written version of this general report a month beforehand so that you have it to look at and make your plans and you can understand the energies at play. But in general, try not to stick too heavily to a certain date as being a certain way because the carryover of the aspects can definitely, you know, stretch over a period of, a period of time. So you just kind of have to feel your way through. Okay, so the dates with the sweet vibes, March 2nd, 6th, 8th, 9th. 
13th, 14th, 17th, 20th, 27th, and 28th. And the ones to look out for for a likelihood of stress and challenges and drama or overstimulation or general awkwardness, March 1st, 5th, 6th, 14th, 15th, 22nd, and 28th. So you can see there are less of those aspects that are more challenging. So I'm just going to hit a couple of other highlights here, um, some of the dates that are most calling out to me to discuss. The rest of them, like I said, you can sign up for the newsletter and you can see all of my um, aspects that I put on here for you in the newsletter. Okay, so on March 1st, it kind of starts out with a bang with an aspect with Venus and Uranus. So often that can bring jolts to love or money or your certainty or self-esteem. So just kind of look out for that. But there is another sweet aspect or a sweet aspect the day after that could kind of help to bring a happy outcome from that or could soften the energy. The days around March 5th, Mercury actually goes retrograde and there's more awkwardness around the days before and after it changes station. So, you know, second, third, fourth, fifth, more awkwardness, more changes, um, you know, just try to keep your scheduling light. One of the big days of the month is March 6th, the new moon at almost 16 degrees of Pisces. And this is also going to be conjunct Neptune, the sun conjunct Neptune. So you can check out my blog. Um, if you go to Annie Helps You, or if you just search for making powerful new moon wishes in Pisces, you can find my blog that helps to guide you using that energy in the best way for creating the life of your dreams. But in general, this is an extremely dreamy and introspective month and this um, moon is ex especially so uh, because of that, because of the sign it's in and because of the Neptune aspect. But it's an artist delight and I really love this time for rest and retreat and rejuvenation um, and being surrounded by inspiration, going to an inspiring place. Definitely watch your security all month, but this particular transit, things going on behind you know, you, your, your conscious knowing um, with internet or home or other security, just be on guard there. Okay, March 6th is the date that Uranus moves back into Taurus. Sometimes we see things happen to the date or very close to the date that are notable, although things have already been happening already since um, Uranus has been marching back towards Taurus. Things have been really getting stirred up over the last couple of months. All right, some sweet aspects and challenging aspects that I listed the dates already. But the other big date I want to talk about is that full moon at zero degrees of Libra on March 20th. I talked about this um, in some of the individual reports as well, but this is the third super moon in a row. Um, and it's the third one at zero degrees, which is the first degree of the sign. So this is denoting major new beginnings, major clean slates, major breakup of old ways. Some of those ways we don't want to, to leave, you know, and so we could be resisting, um, but some of it could be welcome, welcome, welcome change that we've been working for for a long time and just sort of karma clearing up and lots of magic. I really love this full moon, even though it will be intense for better and worse. Um, full moons are always intense, but this is also a super moon and it's also at the you know that first degree. So think about the intensity that we had at the eclipse time around January 21st and then the, um, the full moon in February. Those super moons tend to bring more emotion and more power to the experience. This is also the spring equinox. This is also the first day of the astrological new year, which is a very exciting time to do a vision board. Also the new moon in Aries, which will happen in April is, is one of the other best times to do a vision board, planting seeds for what you would like to create in your life. But this March 20th time is very, very powerful. Very, very powerful. There's also um, three awesome aspects that are occurring simultaneously. Mars in Taurus is trining Pluto and Mercury in Pisces is making a sweet aspect to Saturn, or maybe that was it. So there's two aspects. Um, and those are just adding to the beautiful, powerful nature of this time. So then on March 28th, we have, or, dep or the 27th, depending on your time zone, Mercury is going direct. So again, the awkwardness around those dates to just be extra careful driving, walking with your communications, your devices, don't drop them in the toilet. This is more likely to happen during these Mercury retrograde cycles where your cars or vehicle, other vehicles or communication devices need some attention or extra care. Don't text while you're driving. <laughs> Don't text while you're walking, um, if you can help it. 
Oh, one other thing. We started out the month with that challenging aspect with Venus on March 1st, and now we end the month with a sweet aspect with Venus. Um, so sweet surprises in money and love can come with this one. So it's a nice counterbalance to that jolt at the beginning of the month. So if you love how I do astrology and you'd love a live reading, you can go to AnnieHelpsYou.com, click on Work With Me, and see um, my astrology coaching section. If you would love to learn astrology because you resonate with how I teach, you, there may be some slots left in my astrology apprenticeship program. I would love to have you aboard. If you think I go into details in the reports, then you should see the details I go to go into into the astrology apprenticeship program. Definitely check out my new book, Radical Prayer, Transform Your Life and the World in 28 Days. It has already become an Amazon bestseller, so it's very exciting. So you can either go to Radical Prayer Book Dot com, or you can search for my name and Radical Prayer in Amazon. Uh, also, that should start to be um, available internationally in, at different booksellers. You should be able to get that at kind of brick and mortar bookstores as well. So go to AnnieHelpsYou.com, go to CozyBySweetStarlight.com for written horoscopes from me. I also do a write-up talking about different things than I do in the videos that supplement. And if the videos are a little bit intense, the, um, the Cozy by SweetStarlight.com horoscopes are the antidote to that. They're super light, super easy to follow, and um, give you some different aspects to understand. Okay, so you can go to my husband's website, IamHelios.com, I-A-M-H-E-L-I-O-S.com. He does tarot readings. He also does some astrology readings, and he does visual um, work with um, audiovisual work. So you can check out his offerings there. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.